Jeans, a t-shirt, hat, and sneakers may not open every door that you need to have open. A suit may be the game changer for you. If you're in need of a suit and you have no idea where to get started, you're in the right place. You're listening to the Modern Kings podcast, your source of life-changing information for upgrading your lifestyle and unlocking your keys to success. Welcome to Modern Kings. You probably thought this episode was going somewhere else based on the title, but I'm your host, King Prime, and we're here to talk about suits. Where to start when you are in the beginning stages of getting your suits together? We're going to cover beginner aspects, especially if you have no idea of where to get started and how. Here are some topics we're going to cover. Where to start, how much you should spend, color choices, shirts, and pants selection. So where we're going to start, we're looking at your colors. You're going to decide on a color. The basic colors that you should be looking for are black, blue, and gray. I'm going to give you some do nots in the end. So stick around for that. You've got to get this suit fitted. If you have anything of a decent shape, you have to get your suit fitted. You don't want to be walking around looking like a bag. I've literally seen people attempt to dress and the, the suit is so baggy on them, it defeats the purpose for trying to take your image to another level. Go to a few suit stores. There's Men's Warehouse. There's uh, Joseph A. Bank. There are plenty of departments in malls and the men departments. And there are other high-end stores. You don't necessarily have to start off high-end. But if you go in any suit store, just try on a few. Have the person that is measuring you to give you your measurements. Many of you may not know whether you're 44 long or 44 short or what that number means, but that's a good start for going to a suit store, get comfortable trying them on and look at yourself in the mirror. Celebrate that small win. Just going to the store and putting something on. Let me know how it feels to do that. As you grow your inventory, you want to ensure that you line up a tailor. Now, how much to spend? That is a good question. You have a couple factors here. What is your budget? What is the suit for? Is it for an occasion? Is it for something where you don't want to show up looking like the $200 or the $100 that you paid for the suit? Sometimes you get what you pay for via quality. But if you're young, if you're just getting into your career, if you're just trying to change your look up, you probably shouldn't spend too much on the suit. What I recommend is waiting for a sale. I have habitual habits of waiting for sales and waiting for the right time to pull the trigger on many aspects that cost me financially. Even though this is an investment in yourself, I still wait for Memorial Day sale or Christmas sale or whatever the case is. I am stealthy <laughs> when it comes to waiting for something that I want, especially when I don't have to have it. That's my leverage waiting. But do not get paralysis by analysis by waiting and thinking, oh, I should I should do this set a timeline to do this for yourself. Now, color choice. We talked about this a little bit before, but you definitely want to start out with the blue, black or gray suit. It is not mandatory to be in that order, but those are really nice colors that you can arrange almost any complimentary color with. What you don't want to do is start out with an eggplant suit, right? You want to start your basics and build off of that. Here's the do not for that category. Do not match color for color. It is very distasteful to match a blue suit with a blue tie. Always go with the alternate contrast. Do not take any color besides black on black and match it together. Your pants or slacks are gonna be very important in how you tailor them. You can get cuffs, you can get no cuffs, you can get break, you can get a semi break, you can get a full break, you can get no break. Those are choices in how you want that elongated or that leg space to look when you go to your tailor. 
And you can look up pictures and, and get comfortable with that. Personally, I prefer no hem, single break. And I've seen so many people when it comes to their pant size, they get up and they grab their waist and they go to twisting their pants to pull them up, even though they have a belt on. Your britches are too big for you instead of you being too big for your britches. But <laughs> <laughs> you got to get that tailored. You have to take that down. That is a must. Your pants should actually fit you without needing a belt. That's how they should fit. The belt should be an accessory, a complimentary color. Nothing more, nothing less. One last thing on those pants. Do not, do not get pleats on the front of your pants. That is about 15, 20 years old in fashion and taste. Let the pleats go. Now let's get into shirts. I'm trying to save you from being that guy that looks like the 70 year old deacon, the person on the, on the deacon board that is putting things on from decades ago that thinks he looks good, but not maxing out his potential. When it comes to selecting shirts, there can be an overwhelming variety to choose from. There are pointed collars. There are cutaway collars. There are semi-spread collars. There are spread collars. There are extreme cutaway collars. Now, what you don't want is the pointed collar. The pointed collar is going to come down like an arrow. And some of those pointed collars, they actually have like little buttons on the side. That's that what I call old deacon look. You don't want that. You want that spread collar or extreme spread collar. You want that Tony Stark look. Playboy, philanthropist, billionaire. That. That's the look you're going for. Just imagine if someone had to make a choice or a bet on you simply based on your appearance. What would they think with one of those looks versus another? Now, some of you say, I don't care what people think. Let me tell you, you better start. Because how you look opens doors, it opens opportunities. And you cannot be as an effective leader without those opportunities being organically birthed by you simply existing, but rising to the occasion of your very best self. One last thing on the shirts. You do not want French cuffs. I like cuffs. I wear them all the time. I like cuff links and I like the little accessories that take me there. But as a beginner, you stay with the simple shirts that has the buttons down at your wrist and there's nothing wrong with that. You graduate to cuff links whenever it's time, if it is ever time for that. But be sure when you select that shirt that you can button it up and that you don't have to spend extra just to get some cuff links. So that, ladies and gentlemen, those are my basics for buying a suit. The socks, the pocket squares, the ties, and all of the other accessories that come with, you know, taking a suit to its maximum look. We'll get to that later. But what I want you to do is start putting a little bit more pride into your look, into your appearance. I guarantee you it will make you feel amazing. And you may even have to start with a pair of slacks and a button down shirt and a simple tie. But that's an improvement. Again, your appearance matters. It opens doors and opportunities for you and for you being a leader in your family, in your community, in this world, it is necessary. Dressing well, that's a form of good manners. That's a quote from Tom Ford. Listen, I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in, supporting me, supporting this podcast. Pass this along to the men that are trying to up their level. Again, this is for everybody. Your mom, your sister, your uncle, your auntie, your cousin, your nephew, your dad, and your sons. Go over to Instagram. I am Dot King Prime. Give me a follow. Head over to YouTube at King Prime. I will see you in the next episode. Look your best, do your best, and be your best.